I'm Jane Avarian, and I am with the Center for Spartan Engineering, and we are here today to talk about interview IQ building. Um, so uh, let's just get started and let's move through the agenda. I think many of you have been through um, other sessions that I've done this summer, resume design, beating the bot. So now we're going to talk about interviewing. Um, and let's just kind of work through our, our session and, and take a look at what we're going to explore over the next few minutes together. <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of an interview. I think that's important because um, why do these things happen and they don't seem to be to go away and they're always around. So we're always interviewing. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about the purpose of an interview. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about preparing for an interview. Um, it will, we will spend a few minutes talking about this new world order of interviewing, which means um, recorded interviews, um, virtual interviews. Um, I remember a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I remember a student coming and telling me, I just got a job offer. I never went on site for an interview and I had three rounds of interviewing. So um, we'll talk a little bit about that, that new world and what that looks like. Uh, we're going to take a look at some interview question categories. We are definitely going to visit Who Logic Chapter 9, which is the interview chapter. And I'm going to uh, share that chapter with you as well in a Google folder. We'll take a look at interview responses. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to let Jane T. Avatar, the character of Who Logic, um, show us a little bit about how she responds to uh, very common interview questions. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, post-interview actions. All right, so let's move forward and let's see what happens over the next few minutes. We'll definitely have time for questions at the end as well. Okay, so interview purpose. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, she's gonna start with the first thing, which is this whole provide evidence of relevant skills and experience. Nope, I'm gonna flip things around a little bit. An interview is a conversation. That's all it is. It's you chatting with whoever is interviewing you. Sometimes that's one person. Sometimes that's a panel, a group of people. Sometimes you are recording responses uh, into a screen, just like I'm talking right now, but it is a conversation. At its core, that's what it is. Um, it's designed to do a couple of things. Um, things that I like to call below the surface and above the surface. Below the surface conversations um, have to do with trying to figure out who you are. And um, the interviewer is trying to assess culture fit, but you are too, because a conversation isn't just one way, it's two way. So both parties, both you and the interviewer are trying to figure out, hey, do I like you? Would I wanna work with you? Do I wanna sit and have some coffee with you? Could we ideate together? Could we work on projects together? Um, could you do that within the culture of our company? So assessing culture fit is going on here and it's very nuanced, um, but that is the, one of the purposes of an interview. Big purpose, the above the surface purpose, um, the more obvious reason for an interview is that you are essentially providing evidence of relevant skills and experiences that align with the job and the company. And if we think about it, you did a lot of that alignment and valuation when you were tweaking your resume just before you submitted your application materials. And if you were writing a cover letter, you were doing the same thing. You were aligning your skills and experiences with the job description. So what's happening in an interview is you're taking all that work you did uh, when you were moving through the application process and you're verbalizing it based on questions that you get during that interview. Okay. So that's the purpose of an interview, the primary purpose. Um, I wanna take a couple of minutes just to talk about preparation and what that looks like. So if you, if you look really closely, um, you can see gears here, colorful gears um, next to the words job and company research. 
So you did a lot of job and company research when you were preparing your application materials. What's going on though, when you're getting ready to talk about your skills and experiences, you're doing it in connection with what you understand the job and company is looking for. So in who logic terms, that means you're looking at the job who's, what does that job do? How does that job get done? You know, skills and qualifications. And what outcomes are produced by that job? You know, how is that job adding value to the company? You're actually looking at the company who's. Um, maybe you're taking a look at you, you know, what the company does, how the company gets work done, and outcomes. Maybe you spend a little bit of time taking a look at their mission and core values. And you're putting all of that together and aligning it with your who's. What have you done in the past? What do you want to do in the future? How have you gotten work done? How are you wanting to get work done? And what outcomes do you want to produce? Okay, so that's just my little who logic spin on doing your job and company research. Okay, the important thing is know the job, know the company as best you can, and then um, you know make sure that you're able to make those connections when you're speaking. Um, I believe that when you're preparing for the interview, you know, right before your, your interview time, so maybe 30 minutes before, make sure you've got a copy of your resume available or multiple copies. If it's an online interview, of course, you're just going to have your resume sitting in the background because you might need to pop it up. You might need to share it with somebody who's on the interview panel that doesn't, for whatever reason, have access to it. I think it's important to have a pen. I think it's important to have some sort of paper. Why? Because you can take notes during an interview. So make sure you're prepared, have these items available and ready. Today, I suited up for you. So um, not to say that you would wear a full-blown suit uh, to um, a recorded interview, an online interview, even an on-site interview, but I believe that it's really important for you to dress professionally. Um, sometimes you can take a look at um, some reviews online, get some insight about what to wear for that particular company. Um, I always feel like if you don't know, dress a step ahead. So if they seem like they're a very casual company, uh, you know, business casual might be a good idea. So, you know, a button down shirt, something like that. Um, if you have questions about attire, for sure, ask folks at the Center for Spartan Engineering. Um, there's a lot of resources around attire. Um, know which, which, uh, medium you're going to be using for an interview is it kind of the old world where you're going to go on site or you know is it that you're preparing for a recorded interview that first round um, maybe your second round interview is also recorded but you want to be prepared for this virtual world all right let's talk about this virtual world a little bit even when this covid mess gets cleaned up most of us in the career design, career education world believe that virtual interviewing, remote interviewing is still going to take a front seat, at least uh, particularly for first and maybe even second round interviews. So when you're preparing, um, be really careful about this. Check your background. For those of you who've been in sessions with me before, you may have noticed I typically use a virtual background. I didn't today. It's just a plain wall behind me, no distractions. I checked my lighting today. Um, I've got some you know, natural light coming in. I've got some uh, in back of me light happening so that there aren't weird shadows and things like that. that. So make sure you're checking your lighting. Test your technology. Um, was working with a student a couple of days ago who normally uses Zoom. The company he's interviewing with is using Teams. So um, you know, make sure that, that you're well-versed in whatever technology the company is using. Internet speed is a big deal. Um, you know, if things happen, if you drop off, it's okay. Just make sure you've got phone numbers. You, you have a, um, you know, a backup plan to reconnect. Um, it's going to happen, so it's okay. Uh, again, attire. If you could see me today, I'm suited up on my, my top half that you can see, but I've got tights that I'm wearing, um, you know, on my legs. So, you know, just make sure that you're professional in your appearance. Facial and nonverbal communication, super important. Engage. 
some of you have cameras at the bottom of your laptop. And so often you're looking like this. Don't do that. Um, if you need to prop up your laptop with a stack of books or something, just to make sure that you're really making eye contact um, in the camera. So look in the camera, be bold, be comfortable, um, smile. It, it is an important way to engage. Even if you can't see anybody in the background, um, this is, it's really important to, um, to share your enthusiasm and, and have an open and engaging, uh, receptive um, you know, facial and nonverbal communication. You may have noticed already by looking at me and watching me, I'm a huge gesticulator. I'm using my hands a lot. Um, I could probably calm that down a little bit. So, you know, be careful with your hand movements as well. And, and don't be bouncing around. Uh, a lot of times I sit on a yoga ball when I'm in meetings um, and sometimes I get really excited and I start bouncing around. Not good. Stay calm, quiet, confident in your composure. Okay, so practice. There are lots of ways that you can practice. You can do a Zoom recording and practice with uh, questions that you've come up with. You can use interview stream via handshake. Uh, what is that? It's actually an interview practice tool that the university pays for and you have full access to. If you go into handshake, Let's do that for a second, because I want to show you how to get to interview stream. It's a great tool. Uh, and if you want some practice, you can find thousands of interview questions there that you can practice, you can record, you can watch yourself. All right, so let's go over. And I'm going to pull up Handshake real quick, and then we will go in and take a look at interview stream. Okay, so I'm sure you recognize this homepage. Um, this is my student homepage on Handshake and the way, lots of good stuff here. So don't ever avoid your, your uh, homepage. Lots of good messaging and, and lots of good support and advice right here on the homepage. Um, if you're trying to find interview stream, which again is this software platform where you can practice interviewing, go to Career Center. Come down to resources, scroll down, and there it is. Click the link, and you'll need to create an account. Um, again, this is a great resource. The university pays a lot of money for it, uh, and it's a really great practice tool. So I highly encourage you to spend some time on interview stream. All right, let's get back to that deck. So I think the number one question I get from students is, okay, I have this interview coming up and I have no idea what questions I'm going to be asked. I have no idea and I'm super scared or I'm not scared, but I'm just curious. Um, what questions am I going to get? I think there's a really great and easy way to help you um, in a pretty accurate way, practice some questions that could come your way. Where does it start? It starts by reviewing the job posting. Most, I shouldn't say most, many companies these days create pretty robust job descriptions or job postings now. And a lot of the reason that they do that is because they have an application tracking software that's doing the first review of resumes. And so that review is, is heavily reliant on keyword matching. So if you've got a well-written job description, that can really help you prepare practice questions. So here's our friend Jane T. Avatar, um, and we're going to take a look at how Jane Avatar creates practice questions from the job description. So in the next slide I'm going to show you, it's got a lot of detail and a lot of words. But I want to show you how easy it is in terms of preparation where you can start thinking about the questions that you will get on an interview, possibly, um, and how you can create some questions to help you prepare. You need your, the job description. And for many of you, this job description might look a little familiar because it's the description in the book. It's a marketing internship. 
with UVW, which is the company that Jane T. Avatar, the character from the book, is really interested in. <clears throat> On the other side of the slide is her resume. And then you've got these arrows all over the place. The point here is when we look at the internship responsibilities and we start looking at things like you're going to work in teams and you're going to work on generating ideas for customer engagement and utilizing digital tools. Uh, you're going to plan and develop digital marketing collateral. You, you're, you might be leading certain responsibilities for team projects. Um, we want you under qualifications, you know, we want you to have a working knowledge or build a working knowledge of the portfolio of products that UVW has. One of the things that, you know, is highlighted in the qualifications has to do with technical applications, things like Excel, Tableau, InDesign, analytics software. You already did this alignment exercise when you are applying to the job. You were doing that keyword matching. You're taking a look at the responsibilities and the qualifications on the job posting. Well, guess what? That's where some of these interview questions might come from. Think about this. Would it be weird in, if Jane has an interview for this internship with UVW? Would it be strange if the interviewer said, Hey, Jane, can you tell me about your experience planning and developing digital marketing collateral? Probably not. And so guess what? Jane actually has an example on her resume that she can share. She's not going to just read off this value point, but she's going to build it out in a storytelling sort of way. The interviewer may say, tell me about a time that you led a team. Okay, I assumed leader, a leadership role during periodic manager absences um, for this company with 1.2 million in annual sales. That's where my story is going to come from. I'm going to talk about what I did or what the situation was. I'm going to talk about how I got the work done, and I'm going to share outcomes associated. So actually, if you think about it, You've got lots of practice questions that you can develop just out of the job posting. And if you put your resume right next to that job posting, you probably have stories to tell that align with those questions. So that's one preparation exercise I would highly recommend. Flip the internship responsibilities and the qualifications into questions to help you prepare. Okay, let's talk about question categories. Um, there are lots of thousands, thousands of interview questions that can come your way, thousands. But generally speaking, they break down into the following question categories. So now we're really talking about dissecting the interview. We've moved from preparation to let's dissect this interview. You usually have an introductory question. Tell me about yourself. There are common questions. You know, where do you see yourself in five years? Tell me about your strengths. Tell me about your weaknesses. Technical questions that are actually related to the job. Behavioral questions, trying to figure out how you've behaved in the past so the interviewer can help predict how you'll behave in the future. Situational questions, sometimes referred to as case questions. What would you do if? And then there are your questions for the interviewer. That's pretty much the interview question categories. So let's break them down and let's take a look at them very quickly because where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time is we're actually gonna head into the book. I'll give you the uh, share link in a second or two. And we're gonna take a look at these questions and how Jane Avatar actually answers them using Who Logic. So there's the tell me about yourself. Um, the real question here, and this tell me about yourself question can get asked a lot of different ways. It can be tell me about yourself. It can be, why are you interested in this job? It can be uh, share with me your skills and experiences that are relevant to the job. It's really all the same question. It's tell me about yourself and the skills that you have that are relevant to the job and the company. That's really what's going on here. 
It's an overview of you and how you align with the job and the company. Who logic can actually support your response? And we'll check that out in a second or two. Common questions. Where do you see yourself in five years? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Believe it or not, yeah, you can use WhoLogic. And we'll see how Jane does this uh, when we dive into the book. Technical questions specifically related to the job. Remember the UVW internship job posting as an example. Really interested in somebody who has experience with uh, using analytics tools. OK, um, that's specifically related to the job. Someone with strong communication skills, someone who can work in a team. Um, softer skills, uh, but still related to the job. Um, you may get questions where you are using classroom experiences to share a skill um, or a method or a strategy that you may have learned during class. You may get those kinds of questions. Again, you can use WhoLogic as your framework for responding. Behavioral questions, we talked a little bit about them already. They usually start with tell me about a time when or give an example of. Situational questions, really kind of sim similar to behavioral. What would you do if? Um, you can use WhoLogic. All right, so here's the framework. Here's the WhoLogic framework. And if you've hung out with me um, during resume design, it's not, it's not that different from resume design. So when you get a question like, tell me about a time you worked with someone who was resistant to your efforts. All right. What was the situation? That's your what component. Or it could be, what was the challenge? What was the opportunity? What was the problem? So you think of examples from relevant projects, tasks, activities. You can use your resume value points. All that work you did to write about your experiences, the stories might be right there. And then you want to talk about how you handled the situation. What skills did you use? Methods, strategies, technical tools. What attitudes did you, did you bring? Did you bring a growth mindset, a curious mindset to solving this problem or handling this situation? And what was the outcome produced? The impact, the results, the contribution to the company, your learning. A really valuable outcome is it can be your learning and often is. We learn from our experiences. That's the framework, super easy. All right. So what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna um, go to chat and share with everyone the Google Drive folder. And then I'm going to meet you over there and we're going to pull chapter nine, take a look at it. And I want to highlight um, some responses and how Jane Avatar is using WhoLogic to respond to interview questions, all kinds of interview questions, not just behavioral. So I'll meet you over there. And I'll throw the link in just one more time. All right, so what I would ask you to do is download chapter nine. You should see that the slide deck is here and the chapter from the book is here. So I'm gonna ask that you download that, open it up. You should see what I'm seeing right now. Garth, you'll let me know if not. I'm gonna make everybody dizzy for a second because I'm going to scroll to page 112. Please meet me there. And we're going to take a look at, there's that intro question. Now remember, Jane is interviewing for this UVW marketing internship. Um, I know that you know some of you may have a photographic memory. Um, some of you may not. That's OK. If you don't, you're like me. Um, but this is a marketing internship. It's focused on digital marketing. Um, so 
Jane is in the middle of this interview. You know, if you need to close your eyes right now and picture this, she's in the middle of an interview, they're zooming, the interviewer is talking to her and the interviewer, you know, um, you, in the beginning of the interview, hi, Jane, how are you? You know, hi, Garth, I'm great. Um, thanks for the opportunity to interview. So there's these pleasantries that get exchanged. And then, um, and then the interviewer, you know, says, Jane, thanks for taking time to meet with me today. Maybe says something like, I've reviewed your resume, but really good understanding of you on paper, but I would really love it if you would tell me about yourself. So Jane, very polite, you know, thank you for the opportunity to chat. I'm really excited to share my background and learn more about the internship. She talks about the fact that she's working on a Bachelor of Arts in Marketing. That's one of the qualifications that was highlighted in the book or in the job description, um, several majors that the uh, UVW is looking for. She talks about when she's gonna finish. You might not remember her value proposition. She says, I see myself as an emerging marketing professional. That's actually part of her value proposition with skills using digital tools to enhance the customer experience. These are things that are being discussed in the job description. I'm a creative person who takes initiative. I'm eager to work as part of a team focused on boosting profits using innovative marketing practices. That's literally part of the value proposition that's on her LinkedIn headline and about section. Okay, so she starts diving into, she's using who logic to talk about what she's done in the past, how she's done the work and outcomes produced. So she's highlighting the things that she knows the company is looking for. She talks about offering relevant experience, including the development of a digital marketing campaign that yielded increased sales. That's one of those things that's being highlighted on the job description. She talks about working at a locally owned restaurant um, and working in a quick service restaurant. She was ranked first in district sales because that job description is asking for someone who's had experience helping to increase sales. She talks about working as a university guide where she's using persuasive communication, another thing that's highlighted in the job description, to do what? To influence enrollment. And then she talks about digital marketing skills, including the use of InDesign, Tableau, and Google Analytics. Again, things that are highlighted in the job description. She then starts talking about how she aligns with UVW. I'm really excited about UVW. When I read the company values on your website, I felt very aligned. I've demonstrated entrepreneurialism in each job I've held. Entrepreneurialism is one of those things that the company says they value. And every job has been focused on customer satisfaction and the use of technology, attributes that UVW describe as important and valued. I'm confident I have the skills you're looking for, and I believe the internship offers a great opportunity for professional growth. That's her intro. It's a pitch. She takes, you know, about two to three minutes to work through this intro. She's not reading from a script, okay, but she's talking about what she's done in the past and how she's done the work in the past and outcomes produced that are connected to the job and to what the company values, okay? So read that over and think about that the next time you prepare for an interview. You probably wanna write out your intro because 95% yeah, of the time, that's your first question in an interview. It's something about telling a little bit about who you are and how you connect with the job and the company. Valuation and alignment, okay. I want to highlight just, I want to read through one more, um, and then I'm going to show you a couple of other ones. So here's Jane getting a question during the interview. Again, go there with me. Think about this. Jane's in this, this Zoom experience. The interviewer says, can you tell me about a time you use persuasion to influence an outcome? Now, this interviewer isn't just making up this, you know, let me just ask about persuasion. That's not what's going on. Persuasion is actually mentioned in the job description. 
the interviewer wants to know whether or not Jane can provide proof that she's got persuasive skills. So Jane says, sure. Okay, here's, here's where I want you to start doing a little who spotting. While working for a small local res restaurant as a delivery driver, I regularly heard from customers how much they love the food and many asked about coupons and specials. I also noticed the social media presence was non-existent and I thought it would be a good idea for the restaurant to advertise using social media. After sharing customer feedback and my technical skills and ideas about incentives, I persuaded the owner to let me build a social media campaign using Facebook and Twitter. With my boss's involvement, I built a communication plan offering coupons and incentives and utilized Google Analytics to measure traffic. Within six months of launch, the restaurant experienced a 25% increase in revenue. This was a valuable experience for me and has influenced my future career path. I'm happy to say that the restaurant now has a social media person on contract and their sales continue to be better than before the use of social media. So play with me for a minute. I know you can see who logic here. What is the situation? She's working for this local restaurant. She notices there's no social media. Uh, customers are saying, where's the coupons, the specials? So that's what's happening. That's context. That's what's going on. Then she starts talking about how she's made an impact. I persuaded the owner. Ooh, there's the persuasion thing to let me build a social media campaign. Here's some tools that she's using. This is how she's getting the work done. Facebook, Twitter, campaigns, coupons. And then here are the outcomes. 25% increase in sales. Jane saying, I learned something from this, really influenced my future path. What, how, outcome. That's all she's using. And she's really drilling in and focusing on how, because that's where the interviewer begins to see the skills and Jane Avatar's potential to add value. Couple of other things I wanna point out again, some dizzying here. On page 120, there's a sample of what do you do when you run into, I don't know what kind of question this is. I, it doesn't seem to have a category. How do you feel about working in teams? When you get a question that doesn't start out with, what would you do if, or tell me about a time you worked in a team where you know if you get that kind of question, you know it's like behavioral or situational. You know, I should give an example. I have to provide proof. Just because an interviewer doesn't specifically say, tell me about a time or give an example, doesn't mean you shouldn't give an example. Give an example. It's almost like in your brain, turn it into a behavioral question. How do you feel about working in teams? If you take this question literally, you're just gonna say, well, I feel good. I like working in teams. Does that prove you can? No. So what I'm saying is use who logic. Say, look at what Jane does here. I enjoy collaboration and working in teams. It's an opportunity to learn from others and to share my knowledge. Great teamwork can produce great results. She could have stopped there, literally answering the question. I like it. I like to collaborate. It's cool. But she's got to prove that she knows how to work in teams effectively. So then she gives a who-based example. I'm not going to read it to you. You can read it on your own. What I'm saying here is don't get tripped up by the way the question is asked. Most questions still want you to provide some sort of example. Sometimes you get a question where it's just, how do you feel? Or share with me what you think. But most of the time, what the interviewer is looking for is some form of proof. The other one I would highlight is, you know, this one. Can you share with me your greatest strength? You can read through this on your own. But you can see every single question and response sample in chapter nine includes who logic. So what does that mean? It means you can use who logic 
pretty much for any question that comes your way. Okay, couple more things to share with you. See if I can go and find where I was. There we are. Okay, very, very quickly. The other big question I get from students is, okay, how long should my responses be? I mean, I don't know. And what's most important, the what, the how, or the outcome? Well, I call this the who wheel. Um, your suggested response time when you get a question is somewhere around two minutes. Because usually after that, you, you start, your interviewer starts zoning out. Um, I've been talking at you for about 35 minutes now, so you probably are starting to zone out. Um, but hopefully it's good content. So suggested response time is somewhere around two minutes for each response. The really important thing here, though, is what's the proportionality? Like, how much time should I spend in each area? So you get this question. Tell me about a time you worked with someone who was resistant to your efforts. When you reply, you want to spend about 30% of your time in setting up what the situation was. What's the challenge? What's the opportunity? What's the problem? Biggest challenge I see students have is they get stuck in the what and they spend so much time setting up the situation. They forget about the how and the outcome. Don't do that. Just set up the situation. Sure, let me tell you about a time I worked with someone who was resistant to my efforts. Two or three sentences and that's it. Set up the situation, then move on to how, because the how is where you get to, to share the tools that you use, the skills, the attitudes you brought to that problem, the methods, the strategies. That's where the really good stuff for the interviewer is. That's where they start learning about your skills, your methods, your strategies the kind of attitude you would bring to a problem or a challenge. And then you close it with the outcome, maybe 15% of your time. So in a two minute response, 30% of your time is in the what? 55, 60% in the how, 10 to 15% in the outcome. That's your who wheel. The other thing you're gonna hear a lot is, employers will say to you, okay, we want your responses in the star format. Star and who? There's not a lot of difference. Who is a little more nimble because you can use it for things like resume, value proposition, your pitch for networking. You can use it in ways that you can't use STAR because STAR uses very specific words. Um, there's a, there's a, that kind of trap you or keep you in the box. What, how, and outcome flexible, okay? So this is where the, the frameworks kind of intersect. The situation and the task often relate to what, okay? What was the situation, problem? You know, what's your task related to the situation? Sometimes the task can kind of bounce into the how. The how is really about the action. How did you do the work? So action is part of star format. It's just asking you how you did the work. What skills, methods, techniques, strategies, attitudes did you deploy to do the work to add value? And then results, outcomes. Students have, and no disrespect to STAR, you can use whatever framework helps you keep your responses structured. Over the years, what I've learned from students is hearing from them, it's easier to just think who, because it's only three letters. Um, and thinking what, how outcome is just easier than having to navigate through situation, task, action, and results. Pick something that works for you to kind of keep your thoughts um, and, and your responses sort of collected and structured. If it's star, great. If it's who, that's fine too. But just know that employers will often say, use the star format. But here's where they intersect. They're really not that much different. What, how, outcome. Okay. Um, at the end of the interview, usually at the end, the interviewer is going to say, do you have any questions for me? Use your research. Ask some curiosity questions. You know, I noticed in your third quarter last year, you had a huge bump in profits. You know, was that due to the new product launch? Um, you know, just ask curiosity questions. 
I'm not a huge fan of, can you give me the next steps? Um, can you, you know, tell me how much this internship or full-time job is going to, you know, pay? I don't think that's a great question until you get to, uh, you know, receiving an offer. Um, curiosity questions based on your company and job research. Have maybe, you know, two to four lined up. I always think when, when someone asks you, do you have any questions for me? A really great response is, I do have questions. Can you share with me how much time we have left? I wanna be sensitive to your time. The interviewer is gonna really appreciate that. It's gonna show that you're professional, you're polite. And then once they tell you, yeah, I've got two more minutes, then you know, okay, I can probably ask one question. Here's the one I'm most curious about. Okay, curiosity questions. Post-interview actions. The other little gift that you get in chapter nine are some thank you letter samples. Um, after the interview, you should send a thank you note. You can send it via email. Sometimes uh, you might not have an email address, but if you have their LinkedIn profile, you can send a quick thank you via LinkedIn. Um, there are lots of ways to do this. You can read more about that in the book while you take a look at, at the thank you letter samples. Um, but that's really it. We've dissected an interview. We've talked about uh, purpose of an inter interview, preparing for an interview. We've dissected some of those interview question categories. I've taken a lot more time than I thought I was going to, but this is, I think, a really comprehensive, um, big topic. So um, hopefully I've given you some thought, some tools that can help you uh, build your interview IQ. I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to open things up for questions. <laughs>